Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm really starting to like these little informational videos about Sea of Thieves, so I'm going to continue that. And next, we're going to learn a little bit about each different faction, such as the lore behind them, the missions you can take, and the best way to grind your reputation for each of them that I've found so far. And first off, you have the Gold Hoarders. These are your classic X marks the spot type quests. The Gold Hoarders have in their possession both maps that lead to the treasure chest and the keys to open them. They sell you the map, you fetch the chests, and you bring them back to them for the cut of the profits. They are by far the easiest and most straightforward faction, and they'll be the ones to buy any chests you find, as well as some small trinkets. The most efficient way to grind the Gold Hoarders is to re-roll their quests until you find one that has a large amount of X's on the smallest islands possible. The Order of Souls faction plays very similarly to the Gold Hoarders. Their objective is to read memories of dead pirate skulls to learn secrets and the whereabouts of things they seek. If it's a skull, they'll buy it, with the exception of one that can only be sold to Duke at the Tavern, the Ritual Skull. Their quests can get pretty difficult if you're playing alone, but it's relatively easy if you have a full crew. The best way to grind a reputation would be to reroll their quests until you find one with three to four captains on the same island. And the last of the original three factions is the Merchant Alliance. These ones I find to be the most difficult, given that they have a time limit, and most of their items require constant care in order to maintain them, such as keeping some items wet, keeping some items not wet, playing music so the snakes you're delivering don't bite and kill you, and so on. Some of these quests are frustratingly difficult when you're playing by yourself, so I recommend having at least two players for them. There are other items that they buy, such as gunpowder, crates of sugar, spice and everything nice, and chemical grog. There's no best way to grind the reputation, as far as I'm aware, so I'd experiment to see what works for you. The newest and my favorite faction currently, the Reaper's Bones, doesn't have quests. Instead, you're only tasked with taking down other faction ships, selling all their loot, and if they're an emissary, their flag too, to a servant of Captain Flameheart, meaning yes, they buy pretty much everything. Every fight's a bit of a gamble, so if you want to level this faction safely, I'd suggest buying quests from other factions and just turning in the loot to the Reapers instead. Next up, we have probably the most relaxing faction to date, the Hunter's Call. Like the Reaper's Bones, you won't receive any quests from them. Instead, Merrick and his family stationed on the sea post are culinary connoisseurs and are centered around hunting and fishing. They'll buy all forms of meat from you, including the Kraken and the Megalodon. The better cooked the meat is, the more money and reputation you'll earn from it. A strategy I saw to level up quickly was fishing without bait at the pond at Mermaid's Hideaway to catch, well, pondies. A few of them sell for quite a bit, and since you don't need bait for them, it's super efficient. And of course, the more crew you have fishing at once, the more efficient the whole process is going to be. Hey guys, Future Edge here again. A uh, quick note I forgot to mention. While you're out sailing, You'll see these red, green, and blue gems. These are the mermaid gems. They can be sold to any of the previously mentioned factions, giving you both gold and reputation. So if you want to maximize these, make sure you're selling them to factions you're still working on. That'll uh, get the most value out of it. Alright, back to the video. Outside of the traditional factions, we have the Sea Dogs and the Bilge Rats. The Sea Dogs are in charge of the arena mode. They don't have quests, but they do have a game mode that plays similar to a battle royale of sorts which levels up their faction and gives you exclusive cosmetics. It's not my cup of tea, but I understand it's a very popular game mode and therefore very popular faction. The Bilge Rats are a pretty unique faction founded on the idea of seeking true adventure. The Bilge Rats also don't have traditional quests. What they do have, however, is the ability to send players on mercenary voyages centered around the updates as they're released, which I think is a great way to keep people engaged. So whenever there's something new coming to see if they use, you can be sure the Bilge Rats have something for you to do. As you complete these tasks, you're not rewarded with reputation since the Bilge Rats don't follow a reputation system. Instead, most of their tasks reward you with doubloons, which can be redeemed to Duke's Black Market. The Black Market has a lot of exclusive cosmetics and useful features, including Athena Runs, if you're a pirate legend, and recommendation letters that give you one free level up in the faction of your choosing for 30 doubloons once a month. You can earn some extra doubloons by selling Ashen related loot to Duke at the Tavern. And that brings us to our final faction, Athena's Fortune. Athena's Fortune is only accessible to Pirate Legends by obtaining level 50 in any three of the other factions first. Their quest can be very difficult as it contains missions from all other factions including some on a timer and you must complete all of them before you have access to the final mission which, when completed, will give you a chest of legends. The Chest of Legends and other Athena's loot can be sold to the Mysterious Stranger at the Tavern for gold and reputation. There are 20 levels in this faction, 
and when you are level 20, you'll have full access to not only all Pirate Legend cosmetics, but ghost items as well. I've only just become a Pirate Legend, so I can't pretend I know the best way to grind levels, but prior to the ability to become an Emissary, it would take a total of 62 chests of legends to reach level 10, and now the level cap is 20, so you're going to have your hands full for quite a long time. Now that we've covered all the factions, I want to mention Commendations. These work as the game's achievement system. When you open up the game's reputation menu and click on a faction, it presents you with a list of different tasks to complete. Completing these commendations have the potential to unlock certain cosmetics, as well as also reward gold, doubloons, and reputation, speeding up the leveling process even further. That wraps up the guide on the factions of Sea of Thieves. I usually like to sprinkle a little bit more comedy into what I do, uh, but as I made this video, it became more and more informative, and I mean, that's not a bad thing. Uh, I just want to get people caught up in time for the Steam release coming soon. If you like the style of video better than my other ones, I mean, let me know. And if I missed anything else, also let me know, because if there's any shortcuts I don't know about, I need them. I want to thank everyone for checking out the video and stopping by the channel, and I hope to see you guys on the seas. Bye guys!